Sapphire Star, light your way. So Monster Hunter World has finally made its way over to PC after console's users have been enjoying it now for nearly 8 months. When Digital Foundry's John Linneman looked at the various settings and console versions of the game at launch, his takeaway was that the game was an okay looking title, but with some heavy performance. On all platforms and all graphical modes the game offered, the frame rate was uncapped leading into a juddery look no matter what. Based on those platform differences John saw between the PS4 Pro and Xbox One X, John judged that the game was one that was heavily GPU limited. Switching over to the new release of the PC version here, that's 100% the case. All that talk before release focusing on the CPU requirements and memory usage as a whole was a whole lot of nothing burger as I see it. To give you a sense of what I mean, it's not often that the highest non-super sampled settings of a game do not reach 1080p60 on my GTX 1070. Monster Hunter World at the highest settings sees constant dips below 60 FPS and even drops into the 40s. And on the flip side, CPU wise, testing this game on low end CPUs like the Pentium G540 or Ryzen 3 2200 G, a Titan X Pascal on the highest settings was still above 60 FPS in CPU heavy outdoor scenes, although with the Ryzen offering a much smoother experience in frame times. I'm sure that a bottom of the barrel i3 with 4 cores and 4 threads, or a better class Ryzen like the 2400G will manage a completely solid 60 FPS rather well. So with that background in mind and the instability of frame rate on the console versions, I think the relevant question here is not how the game necessarily runs on every setting possible, but how can we best console on PC here? What does that take and what does that really mean? Steady performance as it is right now is an impossibility on console, and PC is the place where we can usually make things like that shine. Usually. So let's run with this idea. Is it possible to retain console light graphics at 1080p 60fps on mid-range i5-8400 machine, either with an NVIDIA GTX 1060 or an AMD Radeon RX 580? And if not, what are the reasonable sacrifices we can make to still get that ultra sweet 60fps? So beating consoles in frame rate while retaining their look require some knowledge at first about what settings consoles approach on PC. Here I decided to look at the Xbox One X's preferred graphics mode as a yardstick for what we should try and achieve or even beat on PC. This mode runs at 1080p and has performance that ranges from the mid 30s and to the 40s. Oh, that sounds pretty heavy given that machine's GPU. Through many rounds of comparison and switching settings on and off, it can be said that Xbox One X runs Monster Hunter World with graphical settings that are not a straight match for the highest available on PC, but more custom made settings with some unexpected differences. For example, starting here with the draw distance settings with the LOD bias option, which looked to be a match for the high setting on PC, with low and medium culling plants very close to the camera, generally producing a very different looking environment. Here we can also see plants move and sway far into the distance. So on PC we would leave LED here set to high and vegetation sway set to on. Turning vegetation sway from on to off saves you around 13% performance. Going from high to medium LOD bias looks to gain you either around 7 to a whopping 55% more performance. And going from high to low saves you 9 to 60%, depending upon what you're looking at on screen and how much vegetation there is in view. This setting is by far the heaviest in the game, with massive differences between high and medium, both in visuals and performance. But it being tied to vegetation means that it barely has any effect on those scenes that don't have any. Looking at shadows though, we see a different story. Xbox One X's shadow settings have the same amount of shadow casting lights as found on PC's high setting, such as here in the opening cutscene, where medium and low cull out important shadow casting lights. Yet the resolution of shadow cascades stretching into the distance in gameplay scenarios is in fact much lower than the low setting even. Here you can see how shadows from this tree and monster near the water's edge are more indistinct and fuzzy than even the low settings on PC when I switch between the various presets here. So this here is a setting from Xbox One X that we cannot replicate on PC, but to visually match Xbox One X, we would actually need to utilize high shadows here, in spite of their being superior in cascade resolution into the distance. Since the PC setting for shadows has a two-fold effect of getting rid of shadow casters and reducing the resolution of cascades in the distance, you would imagine that would be two 
different effects on performance. In general outdoor scenes, where the only difference is shadow resolution, I saw very little performance difference between the shadow settings. So changing them here in this outdoor scene saw 0% difference in performance. Very strange. Though in scenes like the opening cutscene where shadows are actually called out of view, the difference between the settings becomes more stark, and you can see how high to medium sees a performance increase of 3%, and high low sees a very marginal 3-4% increase. Apparently culling these shadows or reducing their resolution doesn't have a massive effect on performance in these scenes. Moving over to textures, I can say the game on Xbox One X runs textures at the PC's full setting, but with the curious problem of some textures on PC never actually loading to their highest resolution, leaving characters and even environmental textures blurry in comparison. Given how the game at even its highest settings here utilizes less than 4GB of VRAM on PC, I'm going to assume this is a bug, and one that Capcom really needs to fix. Currently on PC, regardless of GPU I use, having the setting to full is not actually that full fat experience. And this is really disappointing. And looking at these muddy textures on PC here, we can also see how the game on Xbox One X uses screen space reflections. Turning off SSR on PC shows the chainmail losing some reflection occlusion here, which is not evidenced with it on or on the Xbox One X. This setting though is not very expensive. Turning it on and off in the scene, it is possible to see a 3% performance increase only. This opening cutscene gives us a number of other clues, such as the ambient occlusion setting the Xbox One X uses, producing results most similar to the medium setting on PC, with low and high producing more dissimilar results as can be seen on the books on this table here in the opening cutscene. Here in the scene, going from high to medium sees a performance increase of 6 to 7 percent, while high to low sees an increase of 7 to 8 percent. Moving forward a bit here in the cutscene, we can also see how Xbox One X uses the subsurface scattering option on PC, where you can see shadow maps across the handler's face and across her goggles having a soft fall off. Unlike where subsurface scattering is off and the shadows across both surfaces remain hard edged. Curiously though, and probably owing to the low resolution textures on PC currently, the look of the subsurface scattering between versions is different. It is actually not that expensive though. Switching between on and off on PC sees a performance increase of only around 1% when looking directly at the handler here. Going outdoors again is where we can dial in the rest of Xbox One X's settings. Looking at some of these rocks here, we can easily determine that the Xbox One X max LOD level is set to the equivalent of PC's no limit, with the negative one value on PC making rocks and corners a little less rounded in the distance. On PC, switching from no limit to negative one has around a 1% performance increase, so not anything to really worry about here. Looking at textures into the distance here, we can also see that Xbox One X uses either the medium or high setting here for texture filtering, as they produce near equivalent visual results, presumably being that little to notice difference between 8x or 16xx AF. On PC, the visual difference between high and medium is extremely slight, with all options of anisotropic filtering between low to high having non-measurable performance impacts. Other settings like SH diffuse resolution, HDR bit depth, or volumetric lighting quality are a bit harder to pin down on Xbox One X. Starting with HDR bit depth, the main difference visible on an SDR monitor at least is perhaps the slight, and I mean extremely slight, lessening of luminescence on objects when going from 64 to 32 bit. Here when flashing back and forth between Xbox and the two settings, the difference is pretty much unnoticeable. Given the 3% performance cost from using 64 over 32 bit, I'm inclined to say that our approximate settings for console here should utilize the 32 bit value as even the highest preset on PC does not include the 64 bit HDR. Next is SH diffuse resolution, which is simply the resolution of diffuse indirect lighting used in the game. This means the quality of that non-shiny, non-specular bounce lighting from the sun or maybe even from other light sources. Here I had incredible trouble finding any larger consistent attributable visual differences with this setting, so its setting on Xbox One X is actually a complete mystery to me. But even though I couldn't find any visual differences, I was still able to find performance ones. Going from high to medium on PC sees a 6% performance increase, and high to low sees an 8% performance increase. Volumetric quality was also hard to pin down as the general look of it is very hazy no matter what, and it seems to be so heavily filtered. In the overworld or normal gameplay, identifying the quality on Xbox One X, or even the differences between the settings themselves is really hard. Only in the opening cutscene or any other cutscenes where characters directly occlude volumetric lighting does it become really apparent. 
Thanks to this, we can say that the Xbox One X is either running volumetrics at high or very high, as the medium or low settings here produce an alias halo around the character's head not seen on Xbox One X or the two higher settings. Even though there's generally not a massive visual difference going between the settings here in gameplay, performance differences are pretty noticeable. Going from highest to high sees a 7% performance increase. Highest to medium is a 9% performance increase. Highest to low is a 12.5% performance increase and highest to off sees a massive 20% performance increase. So next to the LOD setting, this is one of the most expensive settings in the game. Going over the last two settings of Water Reflections and Z Prepass, we see another area where I become a bit confused. Z Prepass shows no difference in visuals from my testing between the settings. So its determination for Xbox One X is once again a complete mystery. The tooltip for it though says leaving it off would see improved performance on low-end configurations. In this scene here, I saw a 5% decrease on the GTX 1070. And by switching it on and off in the menu with its rendered background, I actually saw a performance decrease of 4% when going from on to off. So in this case, leaving it on for a modern GPU like the GTX 1060 or RX 580 seems to be a sensible idea. Moving over to water reflections, we have a similar problem like textures, unfortunately. Xbox One X wins again here. On the console here, screen space reflections can be found across water surfaces in the game, giving really nice local reflections for the monsters walking through them. On PC, the water reflection setting does not affect SSR on water. The only thing it does seem to do is change the color of water as it approaches the skyline, as you can see here. So I'm just going to assume that it's currently broken. Even if it is broken with little to no visual impact like it should have, it does have a performance impact, unfortunately. When changing from on to off, I still saw a 2% negative difference in frame rates here in the scene, even though the setting is completely broken. So there you have it. Those are the settings to beat, even if Xbox One X already kind of has PCB in two pretty big areas. Moving to these settings on the GTX 1070 shows that 1080p 60fps is still sadly unattainable. So to get even 1080p 60fps on the GTX 1060 and RX 580 here, we're gonna need some more tweaking. To achieve what we need to get 60, we have to look into sensible reductions that still retain the majority of the look of that Xbox One X version, but move down those settings that cost too much. To do that, we should knock down some of the biggest performance offenders in volumetrics and SH diffuse resolution, which in gameplay at least do not have great visual differences even though there are visible performance ones. For SH diffuse resolution here, I recommend low, and for volumetrics, I actually recommend the last unspoken about setting of variable, which adjusts volumetric resolution based upon your frame rate limit cap. So it maintains the resolution of volumetrics in the indoor scenes that are generally less taxing, but in outdoor ones, it adjusts them down to a lower preset to maintain performance. As a recap, our settings to get 60 FPS on mid-range hardware now look like this. Ambient occlusion is set to medium, shadows and LOD are set to high, max LOD level is set to no limit, SH resolution is set to low, volumetrics are set to variable, HDR is set to 32-bit, and screen space reflections, water reflections, vegetation sway, and subsurface scattering are all set to on. Even with these more modest settings, Monster Hunter World is still seeing GPU-related drops at 1080p, most specifically when bits of alpha pop up on the screen, such as in this opening cutscene when the boat falls, or in the valley when cutting down these plants. Here we can also see the differences between the two manufacturers' cards as they square up against one another. The RX 580 seems to do better than its competitor in the initial stages of the cutscene and directly outdoors, yet the GTX 1060 drops decidedly less frames when looking at the alpha as the boat falls. Here we could reduce that ultra-expensive LOD bias setting from high to medium to cut down on vegetation in the distance and greatly aid in performance, but then we are putting the graphics below the best on offer on console, and in a manner that is really apparent, I think. So really, our last bastion for achieving 60 FPS on mid-range GPUs at this point is to make a compromise which does not affect the image all the time like LOD, but one which it affects it just some of the time. By adjusting the resolution scaling between the different settings, the game's internal resolution before the HUD is rendered is adjusted by percentages. High here is your native chosen resolution such as 1080p, Medium is 90% of your resolution, or 1728 by 972 from 1080p, for example, and low is 75% of your resolution on both axes, or in my case at 1080p, 1440 by 810. Then you also have the awesome ability to have the game automatically scale resolution based upon frame time thresholds that you set using the frame rate limiter. To show you what I mean, look at this scene here with the RX 580. 
Without the resolution scaler on, we see around 44 FPS. With it on, we now see a 75% reduction in resolution to 1440 by 810 to maintain the FPS. Or in this scene here, we see the resolution drop to 66% to 1267 by 712, while the unscaled version is at around 40 FPS. When using prioritized frame rate, the resolution drops are in a near 1 to 1 ratio corresponding with how far below 60 FPS the frame rate would be were it to be off. Prioritized resolution, on the other hand, it does absolutely nothing as I can see it. Really, it does absolutely nothing. It has the exact same frame drops as without the rescaler being on at all. We have really gotten so close to 60 at our adapted settings that look like the console ones, but we're really just not there. So this is what we're going to have to essentially use as our magic button on a mid-range PC to get that extra push up in moments that would otherwise be below 60 FPS. All those scenes that we saw drop heavily below 60 FPS for, like the alpha-induced drops from pickups or particle effects, are more or less lessened or completely cleared up. Although it's got to be said that the adaptive resolution setting here is really not perfect, as it still takes a couple of frames to kick in instead of being immediate, so you will see a momentary one or two frame drop related to the GPU here. Alas, we failed in our quest. The 1080p 60 Dream at console or visually similar settings is not at all achievable on mid-range hardware. Heck, it's really not even achievable on a 1070. And this fact really, along with some other aspects, paints a rather unflattering picture in my mind of this port. Now, don't take me wrong here, I don't have any problem with heavy GPU settings in PC games. In fact, I love them. But I cannot shake the feeling that this game's settings do not offer up enough granularity in some areas. The massive difference between medium and high LOD settings in outdoor areas is really telling. Surely there should be more intermediate options here for that setting, as it has such a dramatic effect on GPU performance. High looks great, but is ultra expensive, but medium and low here are so cheap, but look ultimately worse. Or you have what's happening with the shadow settings. On PC it calls both shadows and cutscenes, and adjusts their resolution for distant cascades outdoors. Surely there should be two settings here covering both of those cases? Xbox One X manages to have cutscene shadows and ultra low res shadows in the world, so it's gotta be doable. On top of the lack of meaningful granularity for some options, I think the fact that the textures currently look worse than on Xbox One X, and the fact that screen space reflections on water are not at all working, tells me the game needed a bit more time in QA perhaps. And more time in QA probably would have also told them that that having so many menu options and prompts to access basic options is not the greatest idea ever. Or it would have told them that the inability to quit the game is not something that should ever happen on PC. Yep, the only way to quit the game in some sequences is by killing the process in Task Manager. Why is this a thing? Well, at least we kind of got 60 FPS here. And just like we almost got 60 FPS, we're almost at the end of this video. So thanks for taking the time to watch it, and take in all those little nerdy bits and differences concerning Monster Hunter World here on PC. Let's hope that Capcom is also watching here so they can perhaps patch up some of the more glaring problems I discussed. If you found my critical eye for Capcom's title here to be informative or entertaining, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you are already a subscriber, please consider hitting that little bell button in the corner to be informed as soon as Digital Foundry posts a video. If you would like to discuss Monster Hunter World on PC, or rendering in general, write a comment below or follow me and Digital Foundry on Twitter. As always, this is Alex, bidding you farewell und auf Wiedersehen.